Hello, everybody, and welcome to problem seven on page 29 of the workbook. In this problem, we're going to work through an example of using the pigeonhole principle. Let's take a minute just to read this problem together. So they're telling us that at the Lama family reunion, family members can escape the general mayhem indoors and settle their differences on the back porch with a friendly game of ping pong. And if you've ever been to a Lama family reunion, you know that uh, this is not so unrealistic, this scenario we're talking about. So they're also telling us that each ping pong game involves exactly two family members playing against each other. And we'd like to show that after this reunion is over, how many people are at this reunion. There are at least two family members who will have played against the exact same number of different opponents. Okay, so to start this problem, let's just lay out some of the things that we know here. So we don't know how many people there are at the reunion, so let's just give that number a name and call it N. Okay, so we'll suppose that there are N people at the reunion. Okay, and then we could think maybe about the number of opponents that each person could have. So it's possible that somebody might play against nobody, and so zero opponents is a possibility. And if you think about it, n minus 1 is the maximum number of opponents, because the, the most people that one person can play against would be everybody except for themselves. Okay, so we'll go ahead and write that down. So for each family member... The minimum number of opponents is zero. And the maximum number is n minus one. Okay, now to kind of frame this in terms of the pigeonhole principle, we can think of our pigeon holes, our boxes, if you will, is being the number of opponents um, that each person ends up playing here. So we'll view this problem as placing each family member in a box labeled with the number of opponents that they played against. Okay, let's draw a picture just to illustrate that. Okay, so our box labeled zero, that would be, we would throw somebody into that box if they didn't play any ping pong at all. Okay, maybe they had one opponent or two all the way up to n minus one. Okay, so in other words, after this tournament is over, we can think about who's in the family and what box they belong to. So if let's just say that Brigitta played against two opponents, then she would land in this box. If her sister Eva played against one opponent, she would land in this box and so on. Okay, and at first it might appear that we have a problem here because how many boxes do we have? Okay, if you think about it, this is really n boxes, not n minus 1, because we're starting at 0 and working our way up to n minus 1. And we've got n people in our group, so it would at first seem like it's possible maybe that there's exactly one person in each box, which would mean we don't get the conclusion that we want. Okay, but we're going to demonstrate that that case can't happen by just considering a couple of possible scenarios and concluding um, that having an empty box is not a possible, or, or I'm sorry, having every box full is not a possibility here. Okay, so here's the first case that we'll consider. Okay, suppose that there's somebody in the family that played nobody. Okay, well, if there's somebody that played against nobody, then there can't be anybody in the family who played against all n minus one other people. That would mean that the n minus one box is empty. Okay, let's write that down. So if there's a family member who 
who didn't play ping pong at all. Okay, then nobody in the family can have played against everybody. Okay, and that really means that the n minus 1 box would be empty in this particular case. Okay, so what's the conclusion then? Well, we have n people at the family reunion. We just argued that the n minus 1 box is empty, so we've got n people being placed into n minus 1 boxes, and by the pigeonhole principle, we know that there have to be two people in the same box. Okay, so n people being placed in n minus 1 boxes. Okay, so at least two people are in the same box, which again means that there are at least two people at this reunion that played the same number of people. Okay, so at least in case one, we've proven what we wanted to. Okay, well, what's the other case? Okay, running out of space here. Fortunately, this, this case is going to be kind of similar to the one above. Okay, so we looked at the case where there's somebody in the family who didn't play against anybody. The other possibility is that everybody in the family played, played at least one ping pong game. Okay, and if you think about that, if everybody played at least one ping pong game, then the zero box is empty. There can't be anybody in this box with zero opponents. And so we have exactly the same situation that we had in case one, n people going into n minus one boxes and we get the same conclusion. Okay, so here goes for our explanation for case two. Okay, if everybody played at least one ping pong game, zero box is empty. And so by the same logic in case one, there's a box that contains two people. And again, that just means that there has to be at least two people in the family that had the same number of opponents.